blah, 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 cold open, snarky comment, spoiler warning, blah. The Battle of the Five Armies, and no, I'm not going to call it The Hobbit. You know, going to see this movie was one of the weirder experiences of my movie going life because I don't think I've ever gone to the theater to see a movie and be more certain that I was going to hate it than I did with this film. I tried. I tried really, really hard to try and get on this thing's wavelength because I knew going in that it was not going to be what I wanted it to be. I knew that for a fact, but I, did, I can't. I just can't. Even if I set aside my attachment to the source material, just comparing it to the Lord of the Rings films, which I don't think anyone is going to argue is an invalid thing to do, that still doesn't hold up. As a movie unto itself, it's okay. It's fine. And if you enjoyed the other Hobbit movies, Desolation of Smaug, actually, I've got to call that the benchmark. If you like that one, you're going to like this. But if you're like me and you felt the best Hobbit movie was the first one because it stuck the closest to what the heart of the book was, this is not going to turn you around. It's not my intention to get into spoilers, but you know what? I'm going to talk about all this different stuff that didn't work for me, and I don't care where it happened in the movie. So, bright points. There were a few. Martin Freeman is still great. He probably gives my favorite performance of any character in this entire series, and I include Lord of the Rings with that. His Bilbo Baggins is exactly what I always wanted to see, what I always wanted from this character, which unfortunately in the grand scheme is to the movie's detriment because he's, as I've said with previous entries, he's not the hero, he's not the main character. The action's pretty good, but unfortunately, as hard as they're trying, it doesn't have the impact of something like Helm's Deep or the Battle of Pelennor Fields because it's trying so hard to be those same things. Helm's Deep was just epic in a way that most people hadn't seen on a movie screen up to that point. And then the Battle of the Pelennor Fields upped that quotient even higher, not to mention had a lot of emotional weight behind it because we were so invested in these characters by that point. By contrast, the participants in the Battle of the Five Armies are largely characters that we've seen very little of, have only seen sporadically, or in fact just barely got introduced. Thorin Oakenshield's Company of Dwarves and Bilbo Baggins the Hobbit himself do not actually take place in the battle proper. Well, at the very end, the dwarves kind of join in, while Bilbo doesn't really fight anybody at all. So all the participants in the actual titular battle, we've got almost no investment to give a damn. I mean, there's the spectacle of it, but the spectacle is not any better than we've gotten from any of the other films in this franchise. That said, I thought it was really cool to see an army of dwarves fight, because it's about the one thing that was new, because we've seen orcs fight, we've seen humans fight, we've seen elves fight, though not quite on this scale, but we've never seen dwarves aside from Gimli fight, so to see an organized army of dwarves and see the way that they fight? That actually was kind of thrilling, and that made me smile because it was something new. It was something I hadn't expected to see. And sort of going hand in hand with that, Billy Connolly playing Dane does very well. The character is very thinly fleshed out, but Billy Connolly brings his Billy Connolliness, which I will always be happy to see in any movie. So yeah, those were kind of the good points. The rest of it, I was either unaffected or irritated. In fact, in a lot of ways, I felt like I was being given the middle finger for my issues with the series up to this point. Why was the last 20 minutes or so of The Desolation of Smaug chopped off and stuck at the front end of this movie, even though it has almost nothing to do with the proceedings of this film, aside from just a bit of backstory? Because f*** you. Why are we forced to spend more time than ever with the CGI orcs who look terrible compared to the practical effects makeup used to create orcs in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy? Because f*** you. Why was a film shot on location in one of the great unspoiled parts of the world feature some of the worst green screen I've seen in the last decade? Why is the second in command orc killed by Legolas as opposed to Tariel, who has a much more emotionally charged and committed reason to actually fight him? And why, above all else, is a battle that takes a single chapter in the book and is mentioned only after the fact because it does not involve the titular character of the story make the entire spine of this film? Because you. At this point, I just feel used. I feel like they knew they were going to get my money, and they just had to put a nice, big, glossy presentation and go, here, give us your money. And I did. You know, when I gave my thoughts on the final trailer for this, I jokingly called this the saga of Thor and Oakenshield. In a lot of ways it is, but I actually came in trying to view this film possibly from that perspective. Like, okay, how does this work as a story about Thorin? He's obviously taking up a hell of a lot more screen time, and Peter Jackson seems to be much more interested in him than he is in Bilbo. So how does it hold up as that? 
It doesn't. Because rather than making Thorin a consistent character, they've had him yo-yo from scene to scene in accordance with what any given scene wants. In terms of how stubborn he is, how much he cares about Bilbo, and how sort of crazed for the treasure he is, it completely varies from scene to scene, especially if you look over the course of the entire three films. And I understand certain interpretations of what happens in the book. There is precedent for the notion that he gets his hands on the gold and there is a certain kind of madness involved in that that just makes him unreasonable. But you know what else is a viable interpretation if you read the book? The guy's just really stubborn and pig-headed. And I feel like the movie really copped out and took the easy route with this basically substituting the Dwarves Treasure and the Arkenstone for the One Ring and having it have that kind of influence on him that the Ring had on various characters in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I think that was the easy way to go. And if they're taking three films, they could have developed a really legitimate arc for Thorin and have it be rooted in his stubbornness, in his pride, and really ground these as faults and flaws in the character rather than just having it be a susceptibility to this other influence and sort of make him into this weird cross of Boromir and Aragorn. And while it's not explicit in the original book that Thorin sort of loses his mind and goes a little over the top when he gets a hold of the gold, it, there is sort of that going on with his character and his behavior does alter somewhat. But they take it to an extreme in this case. Because in the book, Thorin does lead the dwarves out onto the field for the Battle of the Five Armies. In this case, Thorin holds himself up in the mountain and lets his cousin, who just showed up, do all the fighting for him. And he's content to sit back and let his kin die. So they took the corrupting influence of gold and just took it too far and then just had his redemption be basically he sort of comes to his senses and goes, ah, oh, now I'm good. And it doesn't feel earned. It doesn't work. It feels cheesy. It just feels like they hit the point in the story where they needed him to be heroic again, so they made him heroic again. I mean, in the book, the point of the Battle of the Five Armies is basically to give Thorin redemption. And he needs redemption because he's so stubborn, so pig-headed, so set in his ways and so prideful. The only way he was going to see the error of what he had done and his way of looking at the world was on his deathbed. So basically, the Battle of the Five Armies in the book exists just as a way to kill Thorin so that he can have that moment on his deathbed and say to Bilbo, if more of us valued food and cheer above hordes of gold, it would be a merrier world. The only way he was gonna come to that realization is when he was dying. That's why the Battle of the Five Armies is only one chapter in the book, because the event itself doesn't matter. What it matters is that it mortally wounds this character so it can give him his final redemption. And in this case, because they have Thorne basically sort of come to his senses and rally and decide to take on the evil on his own, he, the redemption at the end doesn't really feel right. It feels more like a half-hearted apology to Bilbo for being a jerk. And I suppose the last thing to talk about, the ending just feels really, really rushed. And actually even more so than it initially struck me. Because I had a friend who hasn't read the books and isn't excessively familiar with the source material say, hey, do they even address what happened with the Arkenstone? In the book they do, it's buried with Thorin. But this thing that they made such a big deal of in the movie, once they've hit the end and it's time to send Bilbo back and just wrap the movie up, they don't even bother with it. Why are they not even gonna wrap up this thing that they made a bigger deal than it even deserved to have? Because f you. So there you go. I don't really think it works. I don't think it really works as a film unto itself. I don't think it works particularly as a trilogy focusing on Thorin, and I really don't think it works as an adaptation of the book, The Hobbit. I know some people have enjoyed these and your mileage may vary, but I'm, I just have a hard time seeing how even people who mainly know these characters in this world through the Lord of the Rings movies aren't looking at this going, this is not nearly as good, but at least it's over and I can stop being pissed off about this. So allow me to ask you this. What was your least favorite film out of the six live action Middle Earth set films? But whatever one it is for you, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. And until next time, this council is adjourned.